Just a quick check of the IF transformers for DC continuity only. You can see here starting with T1. Looking at the primary side, you can see my uh, connection point itself. Attaching to the plate, pin number 2 of the 1R5 tube. And then uh, the other probe itself back over to the uh, B battery plus side. And looking at DC resistance there, I measured uh, 22 and a half ohms. Looking at the secondary, you can see I measured uh, from the 1T4 tube. Pin number 6, back over to the uh, junction of the uh, point 0 to capacitor in the 3.3 uh, meg resistor. And at that location, I measured uh, 22 and a half ohms of DC resistance. All right, looking at uh, T2, the uh, second IF here, measuring from the plate of the 1T4 tube, that again being pin number two, and the other connection point was back over to the uh, positive connection of where the B battery would attach. And uh, reading that transformer, I read uh, 21.9 ohms. Let's take a look at the secondary now. Looking at the secondary, you can see I tied in to pin number three on the 1S5 tube. And my other connection point went back down here to where the volume control, the high side, the 2 meg control, uh, was my connection point there back over to the intersection of the 47 picofarad capacitor C10. I read 23 ohms of DC resistance. And looking at the primary here of the oscillator coil, L2. You can see I connected uh, right here to the oscillator section of the uh, tuning condenser itself and the other side to ground. And on the uh, primary side of the oscillator coil I read uh, 6.3 ohms. And looking at the secondary of the oscillator coil itself I read 1.4 ohms of DC resistance, again attaching my meter here at this point and here at this point. So uh, pin 3 on the 1R5 and pin 3 on the 1T4. So with those tests behind me, at least from a DC resistance perspective, I went on and moved uh, forward with the uh, recapping. Replacing the uh, caps, I use my uh, outside foil indicator here to uh, check all the uh, replacement caps that went back in the uh, radio to uh, identify the uh, foil side, which based on my design with the uh, LED lighting would be this side. Yeah, I want to take a moment and acknowledge Video Lab Guy. He pointed out that I had my eye laminations here on the transformer in the uh, wrong direction, you can see, in the uh, picture here before I mounted it. And then uh, based on his feedback, you can see, and I appreciate him catching that, so I didn't have to take this thing back apart. I've made the uh, correction here before mounting the uh, transformer back in the chassis. So uh, Video Lab Guy, thanks for watching and uh, pointing out my, uh, my bad there. The chassis being so small, it was really impossible to show the work along the way. I could uh, barely get my fingers and hands in there to get the uh, capacitors in. You'll see in a few cases I actually melted uh, some of the capacitors with my uh, solder and I'm trying to work in those uh, tight spots. But I got all the uh, caps uh, replaced except for the uh, picoferret caps that all checked within uh, 10%, left those in place, and then uh, only a handful of the uh, resistors needed to be replaced. There was a couple I left in that uh, just uh, tipped over the uh, plus 20 percentile right here in this grouping, but uh, I'd like to just to leave those uh, for now. And you can see a little uh, grease there on the uh, slide switch and uh, getting it ready 
to uh, be mounted back into the uh, chassis itself. Just testing here of the uh, miniature tubes here, all tested well. And just being mindful here to uh, make sure I checked all the uh, tubes for uh, shorts first before looking at the emission itself. And uh, you'll see here in this example that uh, you'll see the uh, shorts is called out in the uh, documentation. So uh, again, no issue with the tubes. Uh, they were just like brand new old stock here. I'm just showing a couple of the tubes that uh, I uh, checked. I'm just going through the uh, RF alignment uh, steps right now following the uh, procedure that's called out in the uh, writer's manual and uh, this thing is uh, just super close looks like it's uh, spot on maybe just a little bit of pickup there on that one IF but uh, this thing is uh, really really close here I'll go ahead and continue uh, just doing some tweaks here on the IFs and then I'll move down to the uh, trimmers on the uh, tuning condenser itself and we'll be wrapped up. Just a very slight adjustment here on the oscillator section which is the uh, rear section here of the uh, tuning condenser. And for the antenna trimmer here just a, a slight adjustment here. With the IF alignment and RF alignment complete, let me uh, get this thing back in the uh, case, which still needs to be cleaned up here. Get the uh, loop reattached, and uh, let's see how well it plays. Now, if you know the story, you know the... A little more housekeeping here, just doing a little light filing there where the slide switch comes through. I noticed there were a few burrs on that, and the switch was wanting to get called up and uh, apply just a little more grease as well. Here's the back side of the uh, radio itself with the uh, label reattached and my uh, reproduction uh, batteries here. That, uh, if you guys are interested in uh, reproducing those, you can uh, reference the uh, playlist here for the Tom Thumb. I actually uh, robbed the batteries out of there for this uh, example here. Let's take one final look here of the uh, little airline model 84 GCB 1062A in action. You guys recall it had the uh, slide switch over here on the side, so when I opened the uh, cabinet with the uh, Type A and B battery installed, which I uh, pulled from my uh, little Tom Thumb, it should uh, come on and work. Again, here's the uh, loop antenna, so let's uh, tune in around the dial here. Where were you, Bill? We went to the forest. It's not that far away. Ask your parents to take you and your friends to the forest. Six six eight nine word right now. The register. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. But Larry So it's uh, playing pretty well. You know, considering again it just has this little uh, small Litz wire loop antenna here embedded um, underneath the uh, tacked area. We also have it on a little with folks around the world. It's a global audience tonight at 6.30. That's 6.30 Eastern on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. An opportunity. Visit Notice the uh, dial itself is not uh, tracking exactly right, and I made my uh, adjustments with some uh, what two foot jumpers in place. So I think just the inductance change itself from uh, the Litz wire antenna, I may be able to try to get back in there and see if I can do a little tweaking on the uh, oscillator itself and uh, just clean that up. But uh, as you guys saw in the uh, alignment piece that I showed earlier, this thing was really just spot on, so uh, no one had been uh, messing around 
with the uh, IEFs anyway. Fortunately, we can audible here. Mac will be with us in 30 minutes. We're coming back to your phone calls now, and I got an interesting email during the break. Is it cool? Matt, please come to a mic. Appreciate you guys uh, following along here on the airline model 84 GCB 1062A. And for those out there that uh, do celebrate uh, Thanksgiving, I hope everyone has a uh, really blessed Thanksgiving with uh, family, friends, and be safe. You guys uh, take care. Hope to have uh, something new here on the bench uh, after the uh, holiday. A little preview of what's up next. You can see when I was working here on the little battery powered radio, I wanted to go ahead and uh, fabricate a uh, type A and B power supply for these little uh, battery sets. Uh, this one is uh, set right now to work through the Variac and generate uh, 1.5 volts to the filaments and uh, 67 and a half volts to the uh, plates and uh, screens. I've got a preset 10K resistor here for the uh, B supply, which comes out here, and the uh, filament voltage here. I'll put this in a case later, and I'll share the uh, schematic here in a future uh, video after we get past the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Thanks again for watching.